There's no mister. It's Higgins, sir. <laughs> The National Broadcasting Company presents a new comedy series, It's Higgins, Sir, created and transcribed by Paul Harrison and starring Harry McNaughton as Higgins. <laughs> the first ray of the morning sun is peeping over the far shore of Lake Patatuki. It glides over the glistening white beach in front of the Roberts cabin. Finally, it arrives at the shaded window of the bedroom. It hesitates, then finds a crack where the shade doesn't quite meet the windowsill. It shoots happily into the dark bedroom of the sleeping Mr. and Mrs. Roberts. It runs over the floor to the foot of their bed, runs quickly up the bed, over the rumpled blanket, to the chin of Mr. Roberts, up over the chin, across his nose, and right in his eye. Uh, what, was, what was that? Who hit me? Oh... Oh, the sun. What time is it? Oh, 5.30. Just pull this shade down and go back to bed. Good night, sweet prince. What was that? Oh, the shade. Uh, Any more of that and I'll be awake. Look, come on, hurry. Today's the day we eat lunch in the woods. Quiet, you'll wake up mother and daddy. Oh, what's the use? Please, Philip, you're waking me up. I'm waking you up? Yes, you keep getting up and down, dear. Oh. Hey, Mom, where's the potatoes? Me and Debbie are going to bake potatoes for lunch. Yeah, and fry bacon. I know this is a losing battle, but don't you think it's a little early to get up? Uh-huh. Gee, the sun's up. Who can sleep? Watch. Hmm. Philip, maybe we'd better get up, dear. Uh, oh, who is it? It's Higgins, sir. Are you up to? Yes, sir. But I keep hoping it's only a bad dream. What is the matter with this family? We're on vacation. Do we have to get up at the crack of dawn? If you'll pardon me, sir, but it seems that today the dawn came up like thunder. Yes. <laughs> Well, I suppose we'll have to make the best of it. And we are going to stay awake, sir. With the greatest of difficulty. Then as Master Thomas so frequently says, Oh, my aching back. <laughs> coffee. I say more coffee, Mr. Roberts. Philip. Their daddy's asleep. Amazing. Imagine being able to sleep with that bowl of cereal popping and cracking in his face. <laughs> Gee, he's asleep and still chewing. Philip, dear. Philip. Hmm? 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 Oh, oh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. What time is it, hmm? We're eating breakfast, dear, and you fell asleep. Huh? Oh. Oh, now I remember. Higgins, give me some coffee. Look at Higgins. Now he's asleep. Hey, he's better than you, Pop. He's sleeping standing up. <laughs> Higgins. Higgins? Uh, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll have some more coffee, huh? Uh, yes, sir. I'll go right out and get it. You've got the pot in your hand. <laughs> have I? Oh, oh, so I have. Oh, I say, what foresight. <laughs> yeah, here you are, sir. Say, Mother, Pudgy is coming over to take me for a boat ride. That sounds nice, dear. Pudgy, when did he get up here? The almond trouts came up yesterday afternoon. Oh, and he has a boat this summer? Oh, no, no. It used to be so nice with him way over on the other side of the lake. It's a beautiful boat with an outboard motor and everything. Oh, fine. Say, uh, Mom, Debbie and I better get started. It's getting late. Oh, quite, Master Thomas. It's almost 6.30 a.m. Is this the day you and Debbie camp out and cook your own lunch? Yeah, and we got everything all planned. Well, just be careful you don't get lost in the woods. Oh, we'll be careful. I'm going to take my hatchet and blaze a trail. And we're going to take a compass. Say, Higgins, could you help us finish packing our knapsacks? I'd be delighted. And if I do say so myself, I pack a very tidy knapsack. Which way? Out on the porch. Come on, Debbie. Here we are. Look at all this stuff. 
Oh, what, are we running a rummage sale? Oh, there's not much stuff. From hatchet, waterproof matches, bacon, canteen, our ponchos. Poncho? What on earth is a poncho? Well, please, you stick your head right through that hole. My word, they look like raincoats for short telephone poles. <laughs> oh, no, you, you use them for raincoats or to sit on. Lots of things. We thought of everything. I even got my bottles and chloroform to collect bugs. And I've got my snake skinning knife. What's that? Oh, that's for skinning snakes. Skinning snakes? My word, do the snakes stand still long enough for that sort of thing? <laughs> I'm all ready, Tommy. Okay, Debbie. Well, goodbye, Mom. We'll see you before dinner tonight. Bye, Mommy. Don't hide too far. And we won't. Oh, fine. Fine. Everybody's gone. I'm going back to bed. Good night, Elizabeth. Oh, wait a minute, dear. Hmm? First, we need firewood. There's not a bit for the cook stove. Chop firewood. Today? The way I feel? Let's just burn the furniture. <laughs> Allow me to help you, sir. Help me in chopping wood? No, sir, in burning furniture. <laughs> and be sure you get dry wood this time, dear. Remember last summer when you brought green wood? Yes, yes, I remember. All those Platatuki Indians came over, claimed the chimney was sending up smoke signals, calling them out on the war path. <laughs> Indians war path, sir? You mean they came over here looking for those those scalp things? No, no, Higgins, but they did sell us a cord of dry firewood. Uh, come on, Higgins, let's get the axe and the saw. Well, right you are, sir. My word, Indians, scalps. Oh, pardon me, sir, I must get my derby. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir, but just what type of tree are we looking for, sir? We've passed literally thousands of them. Oh, they were all alive. I want a dead one. They make better firewood. Uh, ah, uh, there's, there's a good one. Ah, yes. Why, oh, say, that seems to be quite dead. Yes. Look, a vulture is pecking at it. That is a red-headed woodpecker. <laughs> yes, yes, this tree looks fine, uh, now, I'll uh, make my first cut right here and make the tree fall in that direction. It won't break any young trees that way. Oh, I say you're awfully clever, sir. Fancy knowing which way a tree will fall. What is it? Look over there, on that tree stump. Yeah. Oh, boy, what a big toad. Let's catch him and take him home. Mom says they give us warts. That's silly. Toads don't give warts to people. Toads only give warts to other toads. <laughs> I'll catch him. <laughs> you got him, you got him. Oh, boy, he's a beauty. I'll, I'll stick him in my knapsack. Oh, Tommy, look. The swell is centipede. Boy, look at all those legs. Hey, Mom and Pop are sure lucky they have us for children instead of centipedes. What do you mean? Well, imagine buying shoes for those. A hundred legs each. <laughs> I'll get my chloroform bottle. I want him for my collection. Hey, look right over there. A great big king snake. Boy, is he a darb. Let's camp here. Toads and centipedes and snakes. <laughs> Isn't it just beautiful? <laughs> it's a perfect place to camp. Yeah. I'll start looking for firewood for the campfire. What was that? Gee, who knows? Hit the dirt on the ground, quick. On your stomach. Okay. <laughs> Be quiet, stop laughing. I can't. The leaves and twigs tickle my stomach. <laughs> Crawl up like this and see what that was. Can I crawl up with you? Okay, but keep your head down. And keep that down, too. Uh, uh, well, the tree's just about ready to fall. Uh, now, Higgins, you stay right over there where it's safe. Over here, sir? That's right. The tree will fall in the opposite direction from where you are. I have absolute confidence in you, Mr. Robert. Uh, 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 
Well, there it goes. Starting down, Pa. Yeah, that did it. I'll get over there next to you. Sir? Yes? The tree. Is it possible for it to lean this way before it falls the other way? <laughs> Probably an optical illusion. It, it can't fall this way. I have absolute confidence in you, Mr. Roberts. Higgins! It is falling this way. I'll stand my ground, sir. Come on, Higgins. Don't have so much confidence in me. In the... My word, we were almost killed by an optical illusion. <laughs> Higgins. Yes, sir. Do you hear anything? I hear a little humming sound, sir. I think it's a ringing in our ears from the crash of the tree, Oh, perhaps. sure, sure, that's it. Uh, Mr. Roberts. Yes? That buzzing sound is not a ringing in our ears. Huh? Oh. No. Oh, bees. Bees. Bees in that tree. It was yes. hollow. Yes, sir. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Ouch. One of them stabbed. Out of my way. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Look, Pop, I don't remember that stuff. Surgeon Lazy, forget language of his people. Forget he is a platatuki. Forget he Indian. That's another thing, Pop. Don't call me Sturgeon. Your name is Kramanta. All right, Pop, and in English that's Sturgeon. But at college, everybody called me Joe. I like to be called Joe. I, your father, Chief Sunfish, your name Sturgeon. Okay, Pop, Sturgeon it is. But I sure get sick of those caviar jokes. How's the fire coming? Your father make good fire. Maybe. But from all that smoke I see, somebody stuck in some green wood. Never mind fire. Son could learn much of old Indian way. This year I make you true Indian. What's that? Maybe fox. Curious fox. We set old Indian snare for him. <laughs> it's two foxes, Pop. You let go of me. Yes, Come on. You let go of him. Oh, children. Uh, they sneak up close. We do not hear. Uh, me feel like cigar store Indian. <laughs> Hiya, Chief Sunfish. We were sneaking up on you the way the Indians used to do. Oh, you know old Indian ways? He sure does. Tommy's a swell scout. Better than Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone. Do not mention his name. <laughs> he is sworn enemy of Katatuki tribe. Oh, gee whiz, Daniel Boone is dead. Good. All we say, he comes to bad end. <laughs> Dad needs someone like you around, Tommy. He gets pretty mad at me for not being more interested in, in being an Indian. Oh, we'll teach you. Me and Tommy read some books about the plot of Cookie Indians. Okay, Debbie, I'll drop around and you and Tommy can give me all the dope. My son is college man. He have diploma. He learned very slow. Took four years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, don't worry, Chief Sunfish. Surgeon will know all about Indians when we're through. Good. Hey, look at your campfire. It's going out. See some dope stuck green wood in it. Who did that? Uh, like you say, some dope. See, a campfire and real Indians. Say, let's find some red platitude clay and paint our faces and do a war dance. Oh, uh, little squaws smart. Want Indian things, huh? Hey, here's some of that red clay, the kind the platitudes used to use. Oh, uh, yeah. That's called maroba. And here's a swell log. Listen. Oh, the drum call. Sturgeon. The old days return to this misty eyes. The young children please me. Let us dance together once again as red men. Oh, Pop, how square can you get? <laughs> you, you are son. You do what I say. We dance. What a... Oh, 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 how are the, 
Mm. Could the bees still follow us here, uh, I, 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 I don't think so, sir. Oh. I haven't been bitten in the last 200 yards. Oh. Oh. Well, we we got to get some mud on these bee stings. Yes. Oh. I, I say, with this dew, sir, it, 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 it's red, but cool and moist. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, Higgins, that feels wonderful on my face. Oh, mine too, sir. It's delightful. Uh, <laughs> Higgins, <laughs> do you look silly? <laughs> like a plate full of melted strawberry ice cream. <laughs> really, sir? I sound delicious. <laughs> uh, see, you know, uh, I think I recognize this part of the woods. Uh, the cabin is that way. No. It's that way. I believe it's that way, sir. No, no, no. No, it's that way. Higgins. Sir? We're lost. Lost, sir? But that's impossible. I have absolute confidence in you, sir. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Well, to be perfectly frank, I know exactly where we are. It's just I don't know what's happened to the cabin. Well, there, there you are, sir. You see, cabins are so unreliable. Hmm. <laughs> oh, I've, I've got it. A tree. A tree, Higgins. A yes. tree with moss on it. Uh, find me a tree with moss on it. Tree with moss. Yes, just a moss. Tree with... Oh, here's a dandy, sir. Oh, good, good. Let me see it. Oh, oh it's a crackerjack. It has moss all around it. Hmm, well, that one won't help. I need one with moss on only one side. That will tell the direction. Mm, what direction, sir? Huh? Yeah, your direction. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. North? No. South. West, sir? East? Shall we go around again, sir? <laughs> uh, never mind the tree. I've... I've got it, Higgins. Pudgy. My word, does moss grow on him, sir? <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, I, I wouldn't be surprised, but that motorboat of his is, is, is the solution. We, we'll hear it when he starts it up. Then, presto, there's the cabin. Oh, yes, sir. Now, why didn't I think of that, sir? <laughs> because you have absolute confidence in me. I do, sir. Yes. I, I do? <laughs> you think it'll start now, Pudgy? Gee, I wanted to get an early start and work on my tan. Pudgy, you sure there's plenty of gas? Well, for goodness sake, what's the matter down here? Mother, the motor won't start. Well, when you get it started, see if you can find Higgins and your father. They haven't come back, and I'm worried. They've been out all this time. Pudgy, are you sure you have enough gasoline? Pudgy, don't just stand there with your mouth open. Say something. <laughs> that pudgy. I think he's too dumb to start an outboard motor. He's probably out of gas. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, did you did you hear something, sir? Yeah, yeah, yes. What was it? Could that be from the cabin, sir? I hope. Oh, no. Don't be silly. The children are camping in the woods. Sounds rather like the Indian raids I've seen in the cinema. In Indians? Indians. Indians? Oh, Mr. Roberts, no. Oh, Higgins, those platitukis are meek and mild. I, you, just in case, we better be quiet, huh? Yes. At least till we see who it is. Yes. Certainly sounds like Indians. Indians? Well, Indians won't hurt you in this day and age. Yes. But suppose one of them is living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait a minute. Why, I see them, sir. My word. Look at the way they're dancing up and down. Yes, yeah, seems like a, a war dance. War dance? Oh, I'm leaving. Oh, stop it. You can't leave me. You don't need me, sir. You said it was a war dance. I can't even waltz. Uh, <laughs> uh, I see what you mean. We, we'll just leave quiet. Uh, yes, sir, yes. Watch out for snakes, Higgins. Oh, don't worry, sir. My feet aren't even touching the ground. <laughs> hey, Mom, it's us. Put the knapsacks here, Debbie. Okay. Well, I'm certainly glad you two are back. Dinner will be ready in about half an hour. 
Oh. Oh, dear. What is that stuff on your faces? You are pain. And Debbie and me were with Chief Sunfish and his son Sturgeon. We had lots of fun. Did you see your father and Higgins? Well, no. Aren't they back yet? No, and I'm worried to death. Gosh, maybe they're lost. Pop! Lost? Oh, Tommy, you're silly. I bet they are. <laughs> Mother Pudgy finally found out what was wrong with the motor. He took it all apart, and now he's putting it back together again. Well, it's a good thing he's so mechanical. What was the matter? He was out of gas. <laughs> well, I hope he gets it fixed and gets home soon. Mrs. Armantrout will be worried. Say, Mama, I got an idea. Chief Sunfish and Sturgeon are camped about a mile away, and if Pop and Higgins are lost, maybe they can help find them. But that's a fine idea. They're Indians. They'll know just how to find them. Well, I'll go right now and ask them. I'll see you soon. Gee, I wonder where Pop and Higgins are. Would you care for another helping of wild strawberries, sir? No, thank you, Higgins. I've had enough. Besides, I get strawberry rash. Oh, my word, you will be an interesting sight. <laughs> Bee stings, mosquito bites, poison ivy, and now, strawberry rash. Rather colorful, I'd say. Yes, technicolor epic, starring Philip Roberts in The Big Scratch. Oh, yes. <laughs> By the way, sir, you know, I had no idea it was so dark in the woods at night. Huh? Dear me, that owl sound as though it's standing right on my shoulder. I beg your pardon, sir, but it is standing on your shoulder. What? <laughs> well, get it off. Oh, oh dear, sir, flew, I say it flew away. That might have been the same owl that hoots every night outside the cabin. Perhaps we could uh, follow it. Follow it? How do you propose to follow an owl? Well, sir, I might try making a sound like a very attractive uh, female owl. Woo! Woo! Oh, he likes me, sir. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. What, 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 what was that? Perhaps it was the owl returning, sir. No. Not unless he found a friend in their walking home. <laughs> there are those two men. No stop till we find them. Oh, now's your chance to show me what a great hunter you are, Pop. Huh? You go this way. I go that. Track them in trap. Shh. The Indians. I think they've gone, sir. Mr. Roberts. Mr. Roberts, I can't hear you breathing, sir. I was holding my breath. <laughs> you know something? Those savages are going to trap us. Yes, yes. Oh, the whole thing is crazy. Why, those Indians have never harmed a fly, Higgins. Naturally not. Flies have very small scalps. <laughs> they, were, they were tracking us down. Yes, sir. Oh, this is the nuttiest thing I ever heard of. Why, I'll write my congressman. Listen. The boat. Pudgy got it started. <laughs> Let's go. I hear the boat, sir, but it occurs to me. How, how do we know it's Pudgy's? There's only one thing to do, Higgins. Now, you stay here and I'll follow the boat. If yes. I'm not back in an hour, that means it was Pudgy and you can follow me. <laughs> but how... Mr. Roberts, how will I be able to follow you, sir, through the forest? Uh, I'll do what Tommy does, Higgins. I'll leave a trail with my axe on the side of the trees. Now, you, you, you just sit tight. Very good, sir. Sit tight, he says. If I sat any tighter, my eyeballs would pop out. <laughs> my word, an English butler lost in an American jungle. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, it's terrible. How did it happen? Oh. I don't know how. <laughs> I, I, I was just trying to, uh... My Jove, I must be nervous. Thought I heard a voice. Oh. I don't know how. <laughs> oh, there I go again. Oh, of course I know what it is. It's the owl coming back from his walk. Oh. That's strange. I thought owls went who? Owls go who? I go how? Well, of course, Indians. Me, cheap sunfish. Ratatouki tribe. What tribe you? Tribe? Oh, yes, well, of course, it's tribe, yes. Oh, of course, it's a tribe, yes. What you name? Name? My name, oh, yes, name. <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> what? 
Me no hear. Speak larger. Speak larger? <laughs> Extraordinary. My name is Roberts. Mr. Roberts. My name is Mr. Roberts. My name is Mr. Roberts. Silence. Was I speaking too loudly? Sorry, I hadn't noticed. You have strange accent. Wear strange clothes. Where are you from? Inquisitive soul, aren't you? Well, I came from a land far away across the sea. Across the sea? Yes. From the land of many hills? From the land of one hill, Churchill. <laughs> you, uh, you wear a strange black headdress, like upside-down spittoon. <laughs> This, uh, this derby, this derby you're referring to came with me from England. Ah, England seems like another world. Oh, you come from another world. I know you are from spirit world. I could say in Indian law. You have come to punish me for leaving ways of my fathers. Oh, evil spirit, forgive poor Indian. I, I, I say, old man, get up off your knees. I mean, that's no way for a grown man to act. Oh, evil spirit, I'd do anything you say. Good heavens, a man of his age. Baby talk. <laughs> Philip, really, Indians on the war Well, I tell you, Elizabeth, they had on war paint and they were doing war dances. Uh, uh, if Higgins doesn't get here soon, I, I, I'd better call the state militia. I, I'd barely escape with my life. Indians, Pop? Yes, Tommy, I'm glad you and Debbie are safe. Those platitudes are up to no good. Well, that must have been Chief Sunfish. Debbie and I talked them into showing us the old war dances. What? Sure, and I painted everyone with war paint. Then they weren't really on the war path? Nah, we were just playing. Oh, well, we saw them later. They, they were going to track us down. Tommy asked them to help look for you and Higgins. Higgins? Oh, good grief. I forgot all about him. <laughs> Can you just imagine Higgins coming face to face with the chief? <laughs> and Higgins not knowing the chief was only playing games? <laughs> Phyllis, you didn't know the chief was only playing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, of course I did. I was just having some fun with Higgins. I... Father, Father, uh, look over there, coming out of the woods. Where? Over there. It's an animal. It's a camel. It's an Indian. It's Higgins, sir. <laughs> it's Higgins, and the chief is carrying him on his shoulders. Well, if you don't think he's hurt. I say, Mr. Roberts, are you there? Higgins, are you all right? Yes. No worse than when I left you, sir. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'll get down off this walking totem pole. Uga Gamguga Ra. Amar Gigro. Shirio. Hip, hip. Thanks for the lift, Shirio. Higgins, what does all this mean? He insisted on carrying me on his back to do penance for his sins, sir. He thinks I'm an evil spirit from another world. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, yes. And he thinks my name is Chief ba 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 tt well, What does that mean? I haven't the faintest idea, sir, but it's so catchy. <laughs> this has been It's Higgins, Sir, a new comedy series starring Harry McNaughton with Vera Allen. Charles Neville, Norma Jane Marlowe, Ethel Owen, and Bob Hay. It's Higgins, sir, was directed and transcribed by Paul Harrison and written by Paul Harrison and Rick Bullard. Join Jack Pearl and Mimi Benzel next on NBC.